Good day, I'm Martin Gago with Market Radius Research. It's Monday, March the 13th, and today we've got Phil Lambert, Chief Technology Officer and Head of R&D at Satellos Biosciences, joining us. Satellos is a drug discovery company developing small molecule therapeutics to regenerate muscle as a new approach to treating disease conditions from muscular dystrophy to aging. The company recently announced its lead drug candidate, SAT3153, and last week the company released some preliminary research findings in the course of its pre-IND drug development. Phil is here to discuss the news and its significance, but please remember this is neither a recommendation or investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Phil, thanks a lot for joining us, and can you first give us a quick overview on Duchenne muscular dystrophy, or DMD, and Satellos' novel approach? approach to muscle regeneration. And then we go into the recent news release uh, you, you put out last week. So thanks a lot for joining us, Phil. Hi, Martin. Um, it's a pleasure. Thanks very much for having me. Um, certainly, I can, I can start off by giving you a sense of the unique way that we're coming at Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So Duchenne is, um, we think of Duchenne as a, a, as a disease um, caused by the loss of dystrophin. And, and we don't disagree with that at all. What we do slightly disagree with or the different direction that we're coming at the disease from is we think the key loss of dystrophin isn't in the muscle fiber, but actually in the stem cells. So the loss of dystrophin in the muscle fiber is what most of the approaches to, to Duchenne have been focused on. When you lose dystrophin in the muscle fiber, you lose the integrity of the fiber to some degree. And, and um, it's that degeneration that's been focused on as far as uh, um, drug treatments. What we're looking at is when, when dystrophin is missing, it's also missing from the stem cell, from the muscle stem cell. And the loss of dystrophin in the stem cell means that the cell is no longer able to divide in the way that is necessary to support regeneration of muscle. So anytime we're always able to, in a healthy individual, you're always able to regenerate muscle after damage. And that damage can be as simple as walking down the street or going to the gym. Anytime we work on muscles, we get damage and then we get regeneration. And what we believe is in Duchenne patients, they're unable to regenerate muscle. And the reason for that is because of the loss of dystrophin within the muscle stem cell. And what the way we've approached this problem isn't to replace dystrophin, which is one of the ways that uh, folks are working on treating Duchenne, but actually to discover targets within the stem cell that we can act upon to reinitiate this mechanism of them, them being able to divide and drive regeneration. So we've, we've gone to the side, if you like, of the whole process and said, are there other ways that we can initiate this process within the stem cell so that these patients will be able to regenerate muscle again, um, which uh, they're, they're currently not able to do. And we believe that coming from the regeneration side is just a, a greater percentage of what's needed comes from the regeneration side rather than from the degeneration side. So we don't disagree that dystrophin is important in the fiber, but we think it's much more important in the stem cell and the ability to drive regeneration of muscle. Would it be a fair summarization of it where much of the other research is focused on sort of stopping or inhibiting the degeneration of the muscle while you're focused on the regeneration of the muscle? Exactly, yes. Okay. Um, we're, yeah, we feel that making sure you can, re as long as you can continue to regenerate, even in the face of damage and degeneration, you will maintain function. And there's data in the literature to support that. It's not only us who believe that, but we believe that as long as you can continue to regenerate, you can support function and, and allow these patients to ambulate for longer. All right. Okay, so that's the sort of the, the platform, and that is your chief science officer, Dr. Rudnicki, who sort of developed this um, uh, platform technology, and you're implementing it now from sort of an academic into drug development, drug discovery, to actually target um, uh, the mechanisms within the body to hopefully treat uh, the degeneration or yeah. ignite the regeneration. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Michael Rudnicki up in Ottawa, yeah, he, he, he came up with a platform that has allowed us to look for targets and pathways that are 
critically important within the stem cell to drive regeneration. So we have really mapped, we understand, I think better than anybody, the processes that go on within the stem cell and the critical pathways and targets that are involved to allow the stem cell to divide in the way that's necessary to create progenitors and drive regeneration of muscle. And it was his, his platform that allowed us to do that. That's identified a key target, a critical target we think that, uh, that can drive this mechanism. And it's that target that we've now developed our own drugs against, our own compounds against. Um, and um, we're super, super excited about what that may allow us to do for patients with Duchenne. All right, so you, you've identified SAT3153 as your lead drug. And yep. last week you uh, announced some, uh, some uh, research results uh, from your initial studies on it. Can you just summarize what, what you discovered or what was shown and what, what is yeah. the impact? Yeah, so we, we have, um, for the last year or more, we've been driving chemistry to come up with compounds with the appropriate profile against this target and the necessary selectivity. And we have identified a compound as a lead, which is SAT3153. Um, and that compound has the appropriate um, target profile and also um, the necessary efficacy in the preclinical models for us to define it as a lead and move it forward. What we're currently doing is a lot of work around that molecule, the necessary work to show that it's very drug-like and to show that it's initially safe. Um, and we released some of those data, um, some of the initial data to show that, as I say, it has the appropriate, what we call ADME properties, those properties that allow the compound to be appropriately absorbed distributed, metabolized, and excreted within um, a living organism. And we're looking for a particular profile there. And um, 3153 continues to show um, the sort of um, the sort of results in those tests that we need for a drug. And we announced some of that in the press release. So um, we mentioned things like um, the fact that it has appropriate plasma protein binding, um, which is a way for us to look at really the availability of the compound once it's given, once it's into the blood. Um, and then we also release some initial information on some of the um, safety parameters. So as well as the ADME, we run some studies to look at initial safety. This is all ahead of going into our full-blown IND enabling studies. And we released some information on HERG. HERG is a... Um, one of the HERG is actually a potassium channel that's within the heart and very much involved in controlling electrical activity of the heart. And it's one of the things that's been identified as being really problematic if your drug was to affect HERG because it can, it can lead to cardiovascular side effects that we definitely don't want. So early in a, a development program, you tend to look and make sure that this very novel molecule, because this is a novel compound, that we've come up with ourselves doesn't have any effect on HERG, and we released information to show that it that it doesn't. Um, so th these are it's really us putting this initial um, package of information around thirty one fifty three to make sure that it sort of checks all the boxes to move forward a, a, as being very drug like and initially safe, and then in the second half of um, 2023, we would then plan to evaluate the um, compound in the regulated studies that the FDA asked us to do, the IND enabling studies that the FDA would want us to do to apply for our IND and go into the clinic. So this is all, there is no human testing at this point. It's all in the test tube, so to speak, and on right. animals. Yeah, the only the only way we do there's no human testing. You're absolutely right. We're still we're still very much preclinical. The only way that we uh, that we um, can represent human is for some of these um, tests we can use um, human cells, human samples to actually show that what we're seeing in animals actually is also represented in people. But this isn't within people themselves. This is just in the test tube, as you say. Okay. All right. So. Uh, what you're indicating is you're on this IND pathway here. So yeah. far, everything's going according to plan. So far, so good, right? Yeah, okay. that's it's it, it. Really, it's it's a stepwise process for sure. And what we're excited about is that so far, so good in terms of um, you know all the parameters we've looked at with this particular molecule. Um, and so we are we are still very much on track to move 
um, to submitting an IND, we hope by early in 2024, and then being into people clinically within 2024. Okay. All right. What are the next milestones uh, through the, the remain? What, what would what what should an investors expect to hear in terms of this uh, drug development uh, in the next little while? Yeah, I think that I think there will be. So there's there's really two major pieces for us in 2023. I would say one is to scale up the making of this drug, the making of this compound, because as we go into our IND enabling studies, we're going to need much more of this compound for our for our testing. And then this and, and then the second piece is the IND enabling studies themselves. So um, once we um, we are we are have already begun the, the what we call the, the the CMC process, which is the the process around manufacturing enough of this compound, manufacturing this compound now on a much larger scale. Um, the process is underway and, and investors should expect to hear once we've completed that and once we're set to then go IND enabling. Um, we'll also talk, I'm sure, to when we start IND enabling and then the next, uh, which should be the middle of this year, and then the next step would be when we make an FDA submission. So one, once we've completed that um, IND enabling package of work and we actually submit that to the, uh, to the FDA. And as I say, we're, we're imagining that's going to be somewhere right at the end to early 2024. All right. Um, so those, are, those are the major, major pieces, pieces that we're looking at right now. Okay, excellent. Well, it's uh, looks like you're you're on the right path going forward, and then it's just a lot of more yeah. hard work to do. And and I guess one clarification on the drug itself you're not ma going to manufacture those drug samples yourself. You outsource that to a third party uh, who yeah. specialize in that sort of a thing. You work in collaboration. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, what we've been doing with a lot of the, uh, so our, some of our initial preclinical work has been within, within our own labs, but we will be outsourcing both our, our, our manufacturer of the drug as well as our IND enabling studies, the regulated IND enabling studies. And so we'll be working with a third, third party for both of those. Um, and what's important, there's always a significant lead in time for this sort of work. And we, we already have those slots established. So we already have those relationships in place um, yeah. with those third parties. We have the slots held um, for us going through 2023, because obviously the second half of 2023 is not too far away. Um, yeah. And so we have those... Uh, we have those plans already set and we have a, a good development plan, we think, in place. Um, and um, now just a question of, uh, of pushing forward and, and, and moving the drug ahead. All right. Well, that's great, Phil. Uh, unless there are any other uh, comments to wrap things up here, I think we covered it all. Uh, thank you very much uh, for giving us an update on your, your development uh, progress. No, I appreciate it. It was great to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thank you.